Your Majesty at your service. Welcome to Fair Clean Talks. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of my podcast, Sustainable Living. We are approaching the end of January and as part of my self-care routine, I'm coming close to the time of the month where I reflect on the whole of January. In one of my self-care journals, it mentions that the 28th of January is a full moon and the theme of the month is fire and the animal it's related to is the lion. Allegedly on this day, you should focus on being creative. So I made sure that I would dance my whole heart out. And as a family tonight, we had a dance party and it felt so good to just let loose, enjoy the music and the neighbours did not complain. It was extra special for me to do this tonight because the last week or so, my hormones and general mood have been on a decline. As much as I'm all for self-awareness and consciousness, I willingly allowed myself to be in a never-ending cycle of being a version of myself that I don't want to be, and I'm sure that no one wants to be around. The combination of a lack of adequate sleep, routine, energy, and the responsibility of life generally can feel like a heavy burden when all you want is to be productive and achieve your fullest potential. One of the questions in the self-care book today was, who would you be if you reach your full potential? My answer for that is simple. I would have a good night's sleep. My kids and I would have a really good routine and I would have energy to not only fulfill my responsibilities of life, but also to achieve my goals. The thing is that reaching my fullest potential is not a reality for each day and it's not a sustainable way of thinking that I'm going to achieve that every single day because of various challenges. On this episode, I want to go over ways we can achieve our goals in a sustainable way. Sustainable living is important to those who want to avoid a burnout and high levels of stress. So when I speak about sustainability on this podcast today, I'm not referring to living in a manner that is better for the environment. I'm more so speaking about living in a way that we can cope with and have a healthy mental state while doing so. So the last week I've been performing badly against my own expectations for myself. I have been able to identify the reasons why and the reasons why are challenges that I deal with on a daily basis and some days are better than others. The impact of the challenges I face on a daily basis don't always get to me, but I do have those days or weeks when I simply feel drained and the past week have been one of those. When I analyse and track my daily scores and performance, I notice that the things that I didn't tick are major factors in my life that allow me to be my best version, which is having the time to focus on my personal spirituality and physical health, which translates in having time dedicated to my mind and body. One of the biggest lessons of 2020 was that we have to focus on ourselves. And when we don't make time for ourselves, we can just lose it. We make time to get ready for work, answer phone calls, watch TV shows, but when it comes to giving ourselves time or even paying ourselves in the form of savings, we can put ourselves in a back burner. I've come to somewhat of an understanding that for me to live in a sustainable way, I will need to give time to myself. This isn't the easiest when you've got a family who need you, but I need me too, and I can only be my best self when I look after myself. So the tips I'll be giving you today will hopefully help you to not beat yourself up for not meeting your own expectations. And this is really a note to self, but I'm sharing that with you today. So I have four tips for you. So the first one, your goals act as a guidance and don't have to be prescriptive. If you live a rigid life, there is no room for error or flexibility. Life happens and nothing is straightforward. So when you set goals, be open to adapt to your life circumstances. Number two, bad days are an opportunity to change your ways of working. In addition to being flexible, bad days allow us to clearly identify barriers and challenges that we have in our lives. Once you identify those challenges, you'll be able to find solutions. For example, I know exactly what music or TV show I need to put on if I just need a moment of 
repeats to do my podcast like I'm doing right now. Number three, goals are things we would like to achieve, not things that we expect to be perfect at. If your goal, for example, is to run three times a week, that means you're likely not at a level that you're doing that and it's not your norm. You need to work towards your goals before it becomes your natural way of being. So allow yourself to strive to get there. Also, if the goals you've set are too high, work in increments. Instead of having three days a week, go from once a week. And once you achieve that, go to two and so forth. And number four, lastly, you can be your worst critic, but also your greatest cheerleader. Yes, you may have not achieved everything you wanted and reached your full potential today, but celebrate the things you did do and achieve and reflect and identify lessons on the things that you need to work on. It's the end of the month and I hope that you can look forward to the next month, reflect on how your year is going so far, be kind to yourselves and it's okay to have a bad week as long as you learn from it. Apologize to those you may have upset and just move forward. We can't control the past, but we can steer our future. Thank you so much for listening. And next week, it's all about love. At the end of each episode, I address the queendom. Your goals act as a guidance. Bad days are an opportunity for you to identify your challenges and find solutions. Goals are things that we are meant to work towards, not what we already have achieved. Be your own greatest cheerleader. Thank you so much for listening to Ferrakeen Talks. See you next time.